Hello everyone, this is uh, Shaz Reyes from uh, NCDH 2023. I'm really privileged today to be with Dr. Erica Fedon to talk about um, atherectomy options for patients yes. with endovascular disease as yes. well as why we don't have endovascular operator as women. Okay, yeah, yeah. so, you know, uh, being a woman interventionalist, I'm, I'm certainly uh, not the norm, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what I've learned being a woman interventionalist is that there's so many women out there um, who need interventions. Sometimes they're not comfortable going to a man, you know, and so I, I certainly um, have found a lot of patients like that. And um, not only that, there are newer diagnoses coming to uh, the forefront, such as pelvic congestion syndrome, that a lot of women aren't comfortable talking to a man about. And so, um, you know, when it comes to that, they'll have uterine pain, they'll have, you know, uh, cramping, um, you know, sometimes even pain after intercourse. And, you know, not, not every woman's comfortable talking to a man about that. Absolutely. You know, it's yeah. a very private thing. And so um, that's something that I've really found women are um, gravitating toward me for and they're comfortable talking about it. And um, so I'm happy to help out where I can. Yeah. Um, but I think we noticed, like, why there is uh, no drive yeah, for women, to for be, women is in there, it. Is there like a, a barrier I think it's, to get it there? Yeah, I think for women, you know, we have, we, we make choices, right? And uh, for me, I, I am very career oriented. Now that doesn't mean you can't have it all, um, but it certainly comes with sacrifices, right? And so I think, um, you know, being an interventionalist, I'm on call all the time. Um, and that is a very stressful lifestyle. My husband's also an interventionalist. And so, um, you know, I think for women, uh, that's not always conducive to what they want out of life, you know? Right. And so, you know, um, I think that is one of the things that there's not a lot of women in interventional for. Is, it, is there being an interventional cardiologist and also expert in, in the vascular interventions, mm -hmm. is there a concern for radiation? Yeah, I think there's always that concern, not only for women though, for men too, but certainly during, you know, um, the years where you're able to get pregnant, absolutely, because those endovascular interventions as opposed to coronary interventions, yes, some coronary interventions are long, but not all of them, but there's some pretty long endovascular interventions, and, and so certainly radiation um, is, is always a concern. Yeah. Uh, and I think, yeah, if, if you're pregnant, that's 100% yeah. a concern. Um, so, um, so this meeting yeah. NCVH is focused and heavy on endovascular, mm -hmm. which is I think makes it unique compared to other venues. Correct. And I mean, I, I feel like it's really not good not to have endovascular presence at a larger scale yes. of, of conferences. So yes. I'm glad this is happening. Yes. Um, so awareness is important for the patients? Awareness is important for the patients, yes. Um, and I think awareness at the conferences. Yeah. I think that's why NCVH is so unique is because it is strictly an endovascular conference. Yeah. And it does raise that awareness not only to the interventionalists. There's primary care here. Mm -hmm. There's nursing and ancillary staff here and techs, um, business people of, of how we can reach more and have successful businesses so that way we do reach more patients. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, great networking with the device company. So we're always building better devices that we can treat patients with. And so um, absolutely there needs to be more awareness from a conference standpoint and then absolutely in the general population. Right. Um, I'm moving or I've recently moved back to my hometown of Lufkin and we um, plan on giving a series of lectures to the community mm -hmm. about not only to the primary care providers Touches. of course but to the community yeah, yeah, yeah. about if you're having these symptoms it could be peripheral arterial disease it could be yeah. chronic venous disease right. and we can do stuff about that because you know a lot of patients don't know that yeah. and so education and fellows mm -hmm. how important it is Yes, so I am You've not, been a fellow. I've been a fellow, yes, and I'm not too far out from yeah. fellowship. Yeah. And I think educating fellows is huge because they are our future. Mm -hmm. They are 100% the next leaders in this field. And we need to keep education to them paramount. In fact, I, there's two fellows here that um, I did general fellowship with. 
and they're both finishing their interventional fellowship. And they said since being here, um, even though that they had peripheral training and fellowship, they said their eyes have been opened. So, yeah. They didn't know that there was this out there, that device, or right. you know. And they said they've learned so much, and they're so thankful mm -hmm. for this conference. And so, um, you know, as a fellow, I, I absorbed everything I could from this conference. Yeah. Even as a staff now, I'm yeah. still coming and absorbing things. You right. never stop learning, right? Yeah. And so that's why I'm very passionate about being involved in the fellows course, being a co-chairman of the fellows course, because. Um, we got to keep interventionalists in the PAD world, yes. um, and, and they're the future. Absolutely. They're the future. Especially now uh, with the interventional training, there's a lot of focus on number of PCIs you get, Correct. Uh, and stuff, which is, and there's a lot of OBLs opening up. Correct. So that took the volume from the cath lab where the fellows are getting training. Yes. Which make them really kind of uh, unfortunate not to have that exposure. Yes, yes. So coming to this meeting at least to show them this is the reality. When you go to practice in a pandemic area. Absolutely. You have to do this every day. Absolutely, yes. They get very focused on coronary training and, you know, they're structural too. Yeah. Structural is the big sexy thing, you know, yeah. these days. And so, <laughs> you know, as a fellow, um, not every fellowship is created equal and some get Correct. no PAD training. 100%. And so, um, no, I, I love this conference that they have a dedicated fellows session throughout the whole week mm -hmm. in some form or capacity, um, and they're networking with the world's experts. Well, Erica, thank you so much for your time. Of it's course. It's been, been a pleasure speaking to you. No, thank you so much. Please watch these videos and others on NCVH YouTube channel. This is Shadi Reyes from NCVH 2023 in New Orleans. Erica, thanks so much. Absolutely. No, thank you for having me. Thank you. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you.